This is a little narrated slideshow of my build of the Mobius Models HAL 9000 kit from 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm planning to enhance the kit by the addition of the Easy Sound module, which I'm going to record into several phrases of the HAL 9000 computer talking. And this is what that kit looks like. And I'm going to substitute its switch with this push button. The kit's speaker grill has moldings for the air holes but it doesn't actually have the holes. Since I'm going to be using the speaker, I need to drill out all these holes. I put a small drill bit in my Dremel tool, and after about 20 minutes of drilling, I have all the holes in place. Following the suggestion of some other people who built this kit, I'm giving almost all the plastic parts a primer coat of a black primer. That was the lens frame. This is the lens ring. I have them on my little Lazy Susan so I can spray from one angle and uh, then turn it as I paint. Just turn it by hand. The speaker grill, however, does not get the primer. It just gets sprayed with the recommended uh, aluminum color. And uh, now that's the dried primer on the lens frame and now it's got its uh, silver color. The edge of the lens frame had some dust that got picked up by the paint, so I lightly sanded that down and gave it another shot. While the flat part of the frame remains with the black primer color, the edges have to be uh, a silver or aluminum color, so I have it masked and then painted. Here I have test fit the lens frame, the lens ring, and the speaker grill. And I have applied the HAL 9000 decal. That black smudge is actually a dot on the camera lens, not on the model. And here are some decals applied to the uh, edge of the lens ring. Now here's a subtlety of the kit. You can see where it says Fisheye Nyko on the lens ring. And that is because Stanley Kubrick in the actual movie prop used a Nikon or Nikor uh, fisheye lens and just put a red light behind it to get the desired effect. And to be authentic, the uh, Mobius models put the same nomenclature on the lens ring as on the actual Nikkor lens, except there's no R on Nikkor, and that is apparently because they couldn't get the uh, permission from Nikon to use the Nikkor name, so they just put Nyko on it. But then they have an extra decal that says Reset, which is not applicable to anything, uh, except the instructions say to put it next to the power switch, which doesn't make any sense. And it turns out that you're supposed to just take the R from the reset and put it on at the end of Nyko, and there's space for it to make it say Nikor. I didn't know that at the time I built the model, and by the time I did know it, I didn't have that decal anymore, so mine says Nyko. At the advice of some other model builders, I used Mod Podge craft glue uh, as the adhesive to assemble all the parts on this kit. Uh, it's all applied mostly from the back. You can just sort of slop it on. None of it's visible. And especially when putting on the lenses later, uh, it has the advantage of drying absolutely clear. So if you smudge a little of it here or there, it doesn't really show. And also it won't fog the lens plastic as some other more common plastic adhesives do. At this stage, I plugged in the included electronics kit, which is just a battery clip, a power switch, and the LED. And there's also a series resistor inside some heat shrink tubing as part of the wiring. And it just sticks in by friction. Then using the Mod Podge along the rim of the small lens, it's put in. And then similarly the large lens. And that's how everything looks all glued up. I installed the Easy Sound module just peeling off its adhesive backing and sticking it over the speaker grill. And I cut off its original uh, activation push button and soldered the wires to my own small push button switch that sticks through the bottom of the case. And I used the double-sided 
foam tape to stick the battery up above. In order to get the battery in that position, I needed to extend the battery leads with some extra lengths of wire. Here's the HAL 9000 with the power turned off, and here with the power turned on, the LED is nicely diffused. All right, a final modification to the HAL 9000 circuit. Um, the sound module does not have a power switch, and it's actually designed to have a slip of plastic stuck under this cell. The other two are not configured that way, so that you can easily break its connection in the series battery connection here that includes all three cells, or reinstate it by sliding the plastic strip back under the, uh, the cell. That wasn't practical here, so I found that there was a foil on the top side of the circuit board coming from the negative side of this cell and going in between these two cells, right about where the tip of my fingernail is. That was an easy place to cut with a, a, an X-Acto knife and wire these two white wires out from that point. I got a small read relay from my junk box which has a 5 volt coil takes practically no power for the coil so what I did was I rewired the uh, LED circuit that came with the HAL 9000 kit originally it had a resistor in series with the wire coming from the plus side of the battery the 9 volt battery and I moved that and put a new resistor on the switched side of the battery or the switched side of the power switch and therefore I could um, have this power switch serve two circuits the LED circuit and the new relay coil circuit under this piece of plastic shrink wrap here are two resistors a 1000 ohm or 1k ohm resistor which matches the factory resistor for the LED and then also coming off of that same point on the switch, which is the switched side of the 9 volt power, is a 330 ohm resistor coming out through a blue wire here and going to this lead on the read relay. That's the positive side of the internal relay coil. And then um, on this lead here, a uh, blue wire comes off and goes up here and ties into a place where I broke the two black leads, the uh, black lead from the LED, the black lead from the 9 volt battery, and then tapped in. So what that looks like on a schematic, here's the 9 volt battery, the plus side of the battery goes through the power switch, which is the one here on the side of the HAL 9000. It originally had this 1K resistor on this side, I moved it to this side and I broke it in the process so I put a new 1K resistor in and then that goes to the LED up here and then the uh, cathode side of the LED which has the black lead coming off the LED that just returns to the negative side of the 9 volt battery. Now meanwhile coming off the switched side of the power switch here is a 330 ohm resistor and that's also under this piece of shrink wrap here and that comes off with this blue lead here and that goes to the plus side of the battery or the plus side of the uh, relay coil as shown here and then the minus side of the uh, relay coil returns to the negative side of the battery and that's through the blue lead here and it's tied in with the two black leads in a piece of uh, shrink tube that's been put around the junction. So now when I turn the power switch on for the HAL 9000 it not only uses the 9 volt battery to energize the red LED but it uses the 9 volt battery to energize the relay coil of this small reed relay. The 330 ohm resistor was calculated to drop approximately 4 volts 
and that taken away from the 9 volts of the battery leaves about 4 volts for the relay coil, which is what it's designed to have. It'll actually energize the coil sufficiently to uh, switch the contacts at about 2.5 volts, but I decided to calculate the resistor to have more current through the coil and thereby give it a higher voltage closer to its specification. Um, so when the relay coil is sufficiently energized, the contacts, which are on the first and fourth pin, are wired through these two white wires here down to the uh, Easy Sound module, and they're soldered onto that the two ends of the broken battery uh, circuit board foil. So that acts as the power switch. So it's pretty simple, pretty easily done. The hardest part was really getting in here with my shaky hands and making the small connections to that foil. So I'm going to have that piece of uh, wood that I'm going to cut to sit down in here over these ribs and it'll be epoxied to the plastic on three sides and to the front side here. And it'll be cut to a size that comes just short of the quarter inch plywood piece if it's laid in here and then it's going to have a couple of neodymium magnets and then I can just lay this up against the wall and the magnets will pull the uh, quarter inch plywood piece into the recess here up against the piece of wood that's glued in and that will hold it to the wall and it'll keep it from uh, swinging or swiveling because of the uh, piece sitting pretty tightly within these three walls it won't be able to swing or sway I think that'll do an adequate job and it'll mean a minimum amount of work <laughs> and a minimum disruption to the wall where it gets mounted and it'll leave this area pretty much unaffected um, nothing intruding into that fairly delicate area okay I've got a piece of pine that's been planed down to the proper thickness and size and then some quarter inch plywood of the same size and the two of them together should be the depth of the plastic in there so I'm going to check that but, but first I have to cut a couple of grooves in this piece to accept those ridges there or those ribs okay those have been cut on the table so let's see how well it fits looks like it fits in there pretty well but I'm running up against something on the top here do the ribs extend? Yeah, they do. They extend a little bit on the top, so I'm going to have to do that cut as well. Okay, that lays in there real nicely now. And this guy lays in there and comes nice and flush with the top. So now I have to figure out where my neodymium magnets are going to go. Okay, I've got some countersunk holes made with my Forstner bits. Um, the idea is to get it to sit one magnet thickness into there and it does there and then on the quarter inch plywood same kind of countersink so now I just have to epoxy these magnets into the holes and epoxy this into the frame and I have to drill a couple of uh, mounting screws, mounting screw holes here for the uh, screws into the wall. Okay, I've got two neodymium magnets countersunk and epoxied in there. North side facing down, and two more here, north side facing up. That's always important to remember when you're using magnets this way that if you put them both north up here and north up here, they'll oppose each other when you flip this one around to mate with that so they have to be going the other direction on one of them and that's going to have to dry okay glue is dry it locks into place should work perfectly and the hanger bar is now on the wall or hanger plate or whatever we're calling it And I should just be able to come over here and align the top and ta-da, it's on there. 
just a very slight wiggle as possible. Dave, this conversation can serve no purpose anymore. 